here's this practice problem. Um, we want to find two experiments that have everything constant except one of the reactants. So if we look at experiments, uh, the first two experiments here, we can see that the concentration of iodide is going up by times two. Bromate is staying constant, hydrogen ion is staying constant. So we want to take these two ratios of rates, these two rates to calculate a ratio to try to figure out what the order of reaction is for I minus, okay? So first we want to find out what the rate ratio is. So it's 1.78, 10 to the minus four, that's the larger rate. And you divide that by the smaller rate. And if you do this on your calculator, you get uh, 2.002249 or whatever, okay? So this is the ratio. And remember that if the ratio is two, it means it's first order. And that's because we have a power of one, okay? So if iodide is five and we double that to 10, the ratio is gonna be just times two. Okay, so if you increase this by two times, because it's only raised to the first power, the rate goes up by two times, okay? So this rate goes up two times, well, this goes up by two times. So that's how we know it's a first order with respect to iodide. Let's just work from left to right. Now we wanna know what is the ratio of bromate and what is the order of reaction with respect to bromate. So again, we're looking for a doubling. That could be four to, four, from four to eight or even eight to 16. You just need to find out and make sure that the other chemicals are not changing uh, in terms of their concentration, okay? So let's see, I've quickly identified a pair, okay? I can see the first and third values here. If we carefully look at the first and third value here, we can see that iodide does not change in the first and the third experiment. Hydrogen ion does not change in the first and the third experiment, okay? But bromate, which is right here, goes up by a factor of two. It goes from 0.008 to 0.016, which is times two, okay? So now we want to figure out the ratio of rates here and then assign the order with respect to bromate. So we take the larger of the rates, and we divide it by the lower or smaller number. And grab your calculator and determine what that is. And I get a value of 2.00224971. So the uh, ratio is two. So that again, tells us that the order is one, okay? Again, if we double this concentration, since it's raised only to the first power, the corresponding rate is gonna be doubled. Now we need to figure out what the order is with respect to hydrogen ion. By the way, if you like this video, check out the description in this video, and there is a link to other videos that I've prepared on exactly this process. We need to figure out what is the order with respect to the hydrogen ion. So we wanna look to make sure we find one that's doubling from 0.2 to 0.4. Not that one, because that's 0 0.03. So 0.02 to 0.04 is a doubling, but we wanna make sure we find the other experiments where it's the same. And I've identified a, a pair. Okay. In experiments one and four, we
we see that the iodide concentration is the same. We see that the bromate concentration is the same. The only concentration that is changing is the hydrogen ion concentration. It's going up by a factor of two times two. So now we want to calculate the ratio of rates here. We want to take the larger rate and divide it by the smaller rate. And what we get is four. We get 4.00449938. So a ratio of four. means that it's second order. Why is it second order? Because when the concentration goes up by two, we square that and it actually is going to increase by a factor of four, okay? So we are doubling the concentration, but since it's squared, the rate is actually going up by times four. So the rate law for this We said that the other previous ones were to the first power. Make sure that your analysis goes with the correct chemical. Um, so iodide is, the, the order is one with respect to iodide. The order is one with respect to bromate. The order is two with respect to the hydrogen ion, the total order is one plus one plus two, or four. So the overall order of the reaction is equal to four. If we want to calculate the rate constant K, we can do that by solving For, uh, for the, uh, why is this backwards? It should be rate is equal to K times all of that. Okay. So if we wanna solve for K, we divide by all of these concentrations. And you can pick any one of these data to do that. I normally like to pick the first experiment because it's on top of the table and I don't get mixed up or messed up trying to pick numbers out from the middle. So I'm gonna plug in 0 0.002, 0 0.008, 0 0.002, and this rate, all from the first experiment into this mathematical equation here, and I'll calculate what the rate is, the rate constant is. So the rate is 8.9, times 10 to the minus 8.89 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay. And that's uh, molarity per second. And I'm going to divide by 0 0.0020 molar. And I'm going to divide by 0 0.0080 molar, and I'm going to divide by 0 0.020 molar squared. I'll write the final answer here in yellow. So let's grab a calculator, see what we get. I get uh, 1.39 times 10 to the uh, 4. And then we have to figure out what the units are here, okay? So I'll use a, uh, a dark blue to cancel out one of the molarities. So 
the rate is molarity per second, so one of these molarities cancels, okay? So I'm gonna have per second, and then I'm gonna have m cubed in the bottom of this uh, fraction. So I'm gonna write it just easily across the way, like so, m to the minus three, which is the same thing as m cubed, and seconds to minus one is the same thing as per second. Thanks for watching and uh, please like and subscribe. And like I said, check the description of this video for links to other videos I prepared analyzing data and figuring out orders of reaction, rate laws, and rate constants. Have a great day.